Hello everyone, my name is Karina, I go by Curtsy on social media, and I present to you the finale to the Rosalind series. Let me tell you a tale of the Rosalind dress. Like most things in life, you don't understand it until you look back on it. This period in my life that started when I emailed my theater teacher in February 2019, almost ended when I went to competition in November 2019, and now officially is ending today in May 2020. It has taught me a lot about myself and what I can accomplish to the Lord my God. But let's start at the beginning of the story. I was making my Violet Evergarden cosplay in junior year when I remembered a competition the theater in my school did called Districts. Seeing as it was my last chance to participate and coming off a newfound sense of creative ability, I emailed my teacher and I began my journey. The competition was in November, but the audition to be part of my troupe was in September. I picked the play As You Like It by William Shakespeare and read it in June. But for the months leading up to June, I was entranced with the idea of a wheel farthingale. So in my personal time in class, I would dream of that dramatic shape and fangirl to my friends. At first, I didn't know what character I should create, but soon it became clear who it should be. Rosalind, a woman who flees to the forest of Arden and dresses like a man to disguise herself because she is unusually tall. Seeing as I am also tall, this spoke to my soul and I picked her immediately. I began my research in July and embarked on a book hunt. I went to the Orlando Downtown Library, Valencia College Library, and the UCF Library. Each place gave me a piece to the puzzle and I slowly began to understand exactly what I was building. In late July, I began the dress and I began recording. This was where my video series takes off. When August came and I started my photography class, I was able to get access to better equipment and learn the skills that I wanted to experiment with. By the time I had my audition and had accomplished the undergarments, I only had a limited amount of time to make the dress on top. I was to finish it two weeks before the competition, but keep in mind this is my first semester on campus at a college and I was working on my AA degree. Somehow I made it. I took photos of myself with my mother, made my cost sheet, prepped my board, and got ready for the tech show where I would display the costume for my high school peers to see. After the tech show, all that was left was district's competition. To best put the story into the words of 17-year-old me, here are some quotes from my daily Instagram update during competition week. Monday. It feels so weird to almost be done with this project. Staring at my empty sewing room feels like those final notes before the finale. It's calming, a bit sad, and brewing with determination. Tuesday. Thank you everyone who said hello to me at the tech show these last few days. I had a wonderful time meeting people, sharing my work. Looking at everything makes me realize just how much I did in these few months. Wednesday. I gave myself a bit of a breather yesterday, but now I gotta get back to work for Saturday's competition. I will have two presentations. One is a two minute explanation of my portfolio for a senior scholarship, and the other is a five minute presentation of my costume to the judges. I am aiming for a superior score so that I can go to States in Tampa, but if I get an excellent, that's fine too. I'm proud of my work and I did my best. That's good enough for me. Thursday. I made progress with the rough yesterday. If I finish it in time for Saturday, I will take it with me. Before I decide to take it or not, I have to determine if it adds to my presentation or if it's unnecessary. We'll see. In the meantime, my mom and I will be scrambling around to do errands and print images for the portfolio. Most likely we'll print images of Violet Evergarden and this costume, of course. Friday. The big day is in less than 24 hours away. Wow. I've been thinking about it so much that the fact that I am on Thanksgiving break is not computing. I decided not to take the rough for tomorrow's competition and just leave it as a fun little project I can worry about afterwards. For now, I am working on my portfolio and practicing my presentation. I printed about 50 images yesterday and I have to print a couple more. Saturday. So much has happened today, I barely know where to start. When I woke up in the morning, I had a cold and I could barely talk. I had this intense rush of fear that my presentation would go awful, but I held on to hope and told myself that I was going to talk no matter how much it hurt. I had come too far to let a stupid cold stop me. I had spent all day at districts from 7am to 9.30 at night. My first judging wasn't until 2pm. During this time, the stress started getting to me. I got pain in my chest and I had to take a nap in one of the classrooms. 
I went for a walk and I ate something and slowly my energy came back. The closer it got to my judging time, the better my voice got. Praise God. When I met with the judges, I felt mega hyper. I gushed about all the work I did for the costume and handed them pieces as my five minute timer was running. In the end, they told me the negative stuff I was expecting, but I was not prepared for what one of the judges told me. She told me that this is what people do in their masters in universities for costume. I was shell shocked. They said this was a museum piece, a film piece, but they questioned if it was for theater. After that critique, I ran all the way to the senior scholarship room and presented my portfolio of costumes and theatrical work. The comments I got back were positive, but also very cryptic towards exactly how much they liked what I did. I then spent about one to two hours waiting to hear the results. I didn't understand what he said at first as everyone yelled and applauded for me and my troupe. Ten minutes later, it clicked. I got best in show for costume construction in straight superiors. This was only four or five o'clock. Half the night was still there. And tomorrow I will tell the rest of the story because something happened that I never thought would happen in my wildest dreams. Praise be to God. Sunday. It was four to five o'clock when I found out I had gotten best in show in straight superiors. I rushed to call my parents and as soon as I did, it hit me head first what had happened. I couldn't stand still as I told them. I kept walking around in circles like a little kid on a sugar high. My teachers told me that I would have to go backstage soon to get the award during the award ceremony, but soon would be an hour or so, and I was told I would get a message from the reminder when to go. But when my teacher left, my phone died. So I stayed in the courtyard and watched people sing and dance. I tried to contact him through someone else's phone, but he was radio silent. The award ceremony was going to start soon by the time my teacher came back. I was rushed backstage. There I met fellow techies who had gotten best in show in their categories. The award ceremony started around 7 and for what felt like forever I waited for my turn to walk on stage. I wish I had been able to hear some of the performances but everyone on stage sounded muffled. We could only hear them if they sang a high note. After I got the award I felt like leaving. My patience to go home was starting to wear down and I was a bit bored. I told myself I had to stay to hear the senior scholarship results, so I went into a room that had a TV screen of what was going on stage. It had sound. I watched some super amazing performances and clapped as people left the room to get their awards. When they started announcing senior scholarships, I held my breath hopefully, but none of the names were my own. One of them was a friend of mine though. Congratulations, Anne! Then, after a little while, a woman came on stage and started talking about a scholarship students could apply for next year. I shrugged it off because it didn't really apply to me, but then she announced she would be giving it to two people this year, right then and there, to students who showed exceptional work. One person from performance, another from tech. She called the first person, and then she called me. I got a $1,000 scholarship. Thank you, Lord. Praise be to you. Looking back now, I'm reminded by different things that happened that night, like how apparently when I walked on stage, I looked around and I was very, very confused. And I apparently I stared at the person as they handed me the paper for the scholarship and I was like, wait, what? What is this? <laughs> Can't help thinking about just how sick I was that morning. The night when I went to sleep on Friday, I felt something in my throat. And then this like overwhelming worry cascaded over me as I realized that in the morning I was gonna get sick. And so I prayed and I prayed. In the morning, I had this horrible sore throat. It was so bad, I could barely talk to anyone on the bus, and I was just having a very awful day. But then, miraculously, the Lord had mercy on me, and He took it away. And I had such a rush of relief when it went away. I can't tell you like how insane that day was. It was such a struggle. And in the end, I was able to get through it. So let's fast forward and let's get over to when I start making the videos. So after competition, I got to work editing the videos and it wasn't until pretty much when quarantine happened that I started posting them. This was because I was learning a whole new program, Adobe Premiere Pro, and I was trying to figure out exactly how to edit them. Stockpiled in like a ton of footage, so it took me ages to get through it all. And eventually I started putting up my video. Originally, I was gonna wear this dress again to a convention that I got a scholarship to for the summer. But because of this whole world situation, the convention has been pushed back to next year. So I decided to do the costume edits now and finish Rosalind once and for all. I hope you enjoyed this series and will stick around for all my future videos. I have a lot of fun stuff planned. And without further ado, here is the dress.
Hello, I'm in a car. If we're moving the camera too much, I apologize. I, I cannot control this because I can't wear a seatbelt when I'm wearing a farthingale. Yes, that's, that's how things are going right now. Um, I'm trying not to overheat while we get to our destination because we're gonna do a little photo shoot and I am so excited to finally take a picture of me in the dress next to Rosalind Street. See you there. It is not the fashion to see the lady, the epilogue, but it is no more unhandsome than to see the lord, the prologue. If it be true that good wine needs no bush, tis true that a good play needs no epilogue. Yet to good wine they do use good bushes, and good plays prove the better by the help of good epilogues. What a case I am in, then, that am neither a good epilogue, nor can I insinuate with you in the behalf of a good play. I am not furnished like a beggar, therefore to beg will not become me. My way is to conjure you, and I'll begin with the women. I charge you, O woman, for the love you bear to men, to like as much of this play as please you, and I charge you, O men, for the love you bear to women, as I perceive by your simpering, and if you hates them. But between you and the women the play may please, if I were a woman, I would kiss as many of you as had beards that please me, complexions that like me, and breaths that I defied not. And I am sure as many as have good beards or good faces or sweet breaths will, for my kind offer, when I make curtsy, bid me farewell. like to give a special thanks to, in no particular order, my mother for photographing me, helping with Instagram, fitting me when I can't reach my back, giving me much needed hard feedback, and helping me get in my costume back and forth from tech shows and competition. To my father for being my driver to fabric shops and being an overall supportive of my endeavors. Both my parents deserve medals for the amount of times they had to calm me down from freaking out. <laughs> To Della Marcel for encouraging me when I inter interned with them and providing me with the books that would send me off in the beginning of this journey. To my photography teacher, Miss Yido, for providing me the tools and equipment in her class to accomplish this. Without her, I wouldn't have been able to get started with Adobe Premiere Pro and learn Photoshop. To my theater teachers, Mr. Horn and Mr. Skiles and Miss J, for providing me this opportunity, giving me feedback and providing me with wonderful high school memories. To my art teachers, Mrs. Sestero and the wonderful ladies at the library, Miss Mahaffey, and Ms. Hillis for letting me store the costume in their classroom or library when I was auditioning. To the ladies at the UCF library in downtown Orlando library for helping me hunt down the books among the shelves and making my research even more exciting. To my best friends Amanti and Jahida for listening to my costume rambles, geeking out with me when my research got very interesting, and being there only a phone call or text message away during this madness. To all my family, friends, and followers on Instagram and Facebook, your encouragement meant the world to me. And lastly, to my dog. Paco and Pedro, the adorable beans who were with me every moment. They made me laugh. Most importantly, they kept me awake with their barking. Ooh.